Hi, everybody. Uh, okay, now what is KMR up to now? I know that I have been giving all of you a lot of trouble in asking you to attend webinars and conduct webinars and so on. Well, the fact of the matter is that in the last 3-4 months, we have all been indulging in this online learning and online teaching. And uh, to be very honest with you, several of us, barring maybe a couple of uh, youngsters who are very well versed in these uh, new technologies, almost 95% of us have uh, tried to pick up whatever we can uh, and try to as much as possible effectively deliver this online teaching uh, content and deliver lectures and so on and so forth. Well, uh, what I think is that uh, whether we like it or not, uh, online teaching and learning is the new normal, as everybody says. So, in what is my experience in the last couple of months, um, we have had certain feedback from our students. We did it from the Department of Physics as well. And looking at the feedback and looking at uh, uh, what the students really want, I thought I will put in a small presentation for all of you uh, so that uh, we are ready for the FDP that's going to happen from 15th to 20th of this month. Now, in, if you have to really effectively deliver an online uh, content, I think uh, the college must have a learning management system. It is kind of inevitable. Well, over the years, there have been several learning management systems and uh, Moodle is one such uh, learning management system. I am told that uh, the learning curve for this is not very steep and we can, we can uh, easily pick up the basic uh, tools and uh, along with a learning management system which our college may itself develop. I, I am told that the management is already um, developing one uh, but, but that doesn't matter. We can always use Moodle. It is completely free. In today's uh, presentation, uh, I'm not really going to talk about Moodle because let's all join the FDP from 15th to 20th and experts will talk on this. Uh, my talk today is going to be on a very uh, uh, simple and an extremely effective uh, you know, screen recorder which is called OBS or Open Broadcasting Software. Uh, why we should have OBS and is OBS very effective? These are questions we will try to answer. In the meanwhile, I, I will also try to talk about uh, some of the um, basic, uh, I should say, lessons that I have learned in the last three months in conducting an online program. So let me see what I can share with you. Uh, well, so the first few slides is going to be on how to prepare for online classes as well as the OBO studio, uh, OBS studio, I'm sorry. So what is this uh, online teaching all about? Well, you know that there are several platforms through which we can conduct, uh, sorry, connect with students and we can deliver online lectures. We have all seen this. Uh, out of these platforms, some of them are completely free and open source, while others are free to some extent in the, in the sense that uh, a free version will have uh, a certain number of features but certain crucial features may not be there it will be there only in the paid version and then there are others which are totally completely paid so there are three kinds of platforms those that are completely free and open source those that are free to some extent and those that are completely paid now we are all been very much familiar with zoom zoom had a head start uh, incidentally i should tell you that many of the platforms we have been using were always there. It is just that we were not aware of it because we did not feel the need to use them. Now, thanks to COVID, uh, when online teaching became inevitable, we started exploring and we realized that there are so many of these platforms available on the web and so on. Now, Zoom has become very popular. Uh, it's a very simple tool to use and many of us have, I, I believe in our college, uh, most of the teachers have become experts in Zoom. In fact, I myself am not very familiar with Zoom. I have only attended Zoom meetings, not really conducted. Uh, but in any case, it is extremely popular. Uh, I am told that there are certain security concerns, but now uh, off late, I realize that most of it has been uh, addressed. Then you have Google Meet, which is another very popular platform in which you could deliver your lectures. Microsoft Teams, in fact, we had uh, a presentation on Microsoft Teams from the Department of Computer Science a couple of months ago. So these are all platforms that are av available. Uh, in addition to all this, I, I recently discovered what is called as Open Broadcaster System. 
uh, software. Uh, this is completely free. Uh, now, I personally feel that this is one software that we can all easily learn and use. Uh, the motivation for this came from Mr. Manjunath, who is actually the technical support uh, to the D in the DCE office, who is behind the Nyananidhi uh, YouTube channel as well. So in one of the webinars that was organized, Mr. Manjunath was called to speak on uh, various platforms and then he said that his uh, YouTube videos are all made using this open broadcasting uh, broadcaster software or OBS studio as it is called. So then we started exploring, myself and Manu started exploring this and uh, we downloaded this and we tried to check this out and we soon realized that this is an amazing tool that all of us can do with. Of course, there are several others. If you are using a window platform, you have Active Presenter, which is also an extremely good um, uh, screen recorder with several facilities that uh, Open Broadcaster uh, software also has. But OBS will beat, uh, I personally feel, will beat uh, Active Presenter hands down because uh, you can make professionally uh, high quality videos using this Open Broadcasting uh, Broadcaster sorry, software. Now, what is it that one should have in mind when you go for an online lecture? Uh, my senior colleagues must pardon me, you are all experts, you know this. Uh, the next one or two slides is mainly addressed to our young colleagues because I have seen many of these videos particularly put on Yananidhi channel. Uh, please don't mistake me. Many of them uh, have a lot to be desired. But I will not blame the teachers because we were going through a process of learning. And I'm sure that by now, many of you have become experts in making excellent videos. But still, I think I, I should tell you what is my experience. The first and foremost is one needs to prepare a content for online lecture. Now, when you're preparing the content, there are several ways in which you can do. There are what are called open boards, there are white boards in which you can write. You know, I'll show you some of this. And you can also have presentation, which is essentially PPT or LaTeX using Beamer. Incidentally, I am now using for this presentation, the slides that you are seeing is based on Beamer, which is a equivalent of the PowerPoint presentation using LaTeX. So the most important thing is you need to prepare content for online lecture. I personally feel a presentation mode using either PPT or LaTeX Beamer is very good. Uh, we can explain this and we have to of course uh, add certain interactive tools to this so that you can also explain these slides by writing over it, by handwriting and so on. I'll talk about that also. My personal opinion is that presentation mode using these PPTs are ex extremely useful and good as far as students are concerned. Uh, well, I already spoke about this. There are several digital platforms, uh, Zoom, Google Meet, Microsoft, free conference call. Achala ma'am will vouch by this, I know, because free conference call is extremely uh, easy to use and it is free and uh, they claim that about 1000 participants can actually participate in this. Nobody has really checked that out but 100 to 150 can easily join and we have had a couple of uh, departmental meetings and we have had certain uh, college meetings also on this uh, free conference call. In fact, uh, our webinar from the IQSC which we conducted a couple of months ago when uh, Dr. Sentil Nandan spoke about digital tools and the need for uh, uh, teachers becoming proficient in these uh, digital tools and delivering online lectures etc was actually conducted on free conference call. Now let's come to learning management system. There are several learning management systems out there. Many of them are free and many of them are paid and there are now a lot of companies jumping into this bandwagon to make these learning management systems. Uh, the ones we have already been using is of course the Google Classroom. Uh, you can try out Edmodo. I did check that out. It's quite good, but then afterwards I switch back to Google Classroom, Moodle. So these are some of the more common ones that people use. Uh, incidentally, you'll, you will be surprised to know that uh, about uh, 10 or 12 years ago, I had attended a workshop on Moodle in Christ College. Long before any of us even thought of online teaching, Christ College uh, had just become the university then or deemed to be university. And they, of course, organized this workshop on uh, on ICT actually the workshop was on ICT and how one can actually leverage the various uh, you know uh, tools that are available in order to make teaching more effective there uh, they told us about how they have been using Moodle for already two years 
So I attended this uh, workshop, I think about 10 years ago, and they said they have been using it almost for two years, which means 12 years ago. So Moodle has been there. Uh, we will see in, in our own FDP, we'll see what we can do. In the meanwhile, Google Classroom is a very effective learning management system. Of course, it has its limitations, but we can give assignments, we can post assignments, we can post videos, and we can, we can ask the students to give back the assignments, we can correct all these things. Now, there are also several online uh, tools for assessing students, and many of them are free. You know that we have all been, uh, all been using Google Forms, that's a very good tool to assess students. You can make a quiz out of a Google form and then you can assess students on that. Self-assessment is also possible. They get to know their score and so on. Microsoft Forms is another one. Testmos, this is also very good. Kahoot, yes. In fact, Kahoot, uh, I, I did try this out for BSc classes about uh, six to seven years ago uh, in a final BSc class where uh, with a mobile and a internet connection, of course, uh, the Wi-Fi is quite poor in our college. Uh, one can actually, you know, do tests uh, real time in the classroom using this Kahoot. So I, I did check this out a few years back. It is also pretty good. So there are several of these online assessment tools that, that you can use. You must explore. I cannot go into details of all this. I urge you to explore all this. Then comes YouTube. I think uh, I personally feel the college must have a good YouTube channel. And there should be a good ICT cell which will monitor what is posted in this college YouTube channel. Um, because the more number of subscriptions you get for your YouTube channel, there are several benefits also available. So YouTube, I feel, is a, uh, is a, is a platform which has a huge repository of educational videos and learning channels and so on. And uh, when we do a lot of online teaching, it is very useful to give links to these YouTube channels for students to learn. There are several channels which tell things that we also tell in the class, in fact, in a much better and a more effective way. So it's nothing wrong in this. And particularly if you're going to think of using a flipped classroom model where you ask the students to learn something and come to your class so that you can have discussion on it before you actually teach, uh, YouTube is a very, very good resource. But one thing is we should use our discretion in selecting this. Uh, there is work for us as teachers. We will have to uh, really do some research and find out whether which kind of uh, YouTube videos are really relevant to the class that we are going to conduct. Okay? So I would very strongly uh, urge all of you to use YouTube not only to post your own videos but also to suggest to students the huge amount of uh, material that is there out there. Now. When it comes to designing online lectures, uh, I would like to share some of my thoughts. And this is again, uh, basically on presentation mode. Mm -hmm. I, in, if day, in the days to come, if time permits, uh, I, myself, Manu, etc. in our department would also like to give a full-fledged uh, course on how to build an online course itself. Okay, we are working on it, we will see. But today I will talk about some of the thoughts that I have in mind, basically on designing an online lecture say 40-45 minutes lecture based on PowerPoint. Now, I personally feel very strongly about this, that one should share material in advance with the students so that they can come prepared to the class. This is what we mean by flipped classroom. You ask the students to prepare or read up, uh, rather than prepare, I would say read up on a certain material, which is going to be the core material for you to teach in your classroom. So once your class starts, the students have a certain idea as to what you're going what you're going to talk about. And this, believe me, is extremely useful. Again, it might surprise many of you. I have been trying out this flipped model for quite some time now in some of the classes, particularly in, in uh, first BSc classes. Uh, I do try this flipped method. Uh, before I start a lesson, I ask them to read on a certain topic and come. Uh, but when I, I would not generally say read uh, in a very general sense. You must be specific. You must say, uh, find out this particular textbook if, which will, should be available or this video that you can see and concentrate on these points in that video or in that textbook. And then my next class will be based on that or based on the content that you have seen there. So that is one thing I very strongly advise all of you to do. When you begin a presentation, it is extremely important to state the objectives of the presentation. So it doesn't matter if you waste one slide for that. Very, very, uh, I should say, 
very uh, briefly you have to state the objective tell the students what you intend to teach how much you intend to teach in that particular presentation and what you uh, really intend them to learn what is the outcome of your presentation supposed to be according to you preparation of lecture and presentation form itself is going to be a big task because a lot of thought has to go as to how many slides you need to do how what are the contents you're going to put in slides pictures normally say things much better than words so what are the kind of pictures you're going to do but then of course all this will depend on the kind of uh, topic that you're going to teach if it's a mathematical topic then not many pictures can be put obviously you will have to have to write a lot of equations but then if it is a history class uh, i you can make it extremely interactive uh, sorry extremely interesting by embedding videos of real time videos for example if you are going to teach about the delhi sultanate or something you can initially start with a video of old delhi you can you can you can bring up the taj mahal the the qutub minar I and mean, create an interest show pictures videos of this and then slowly initiate the discussion so presentation and preparation uh, is extremely important and this is where you have to use uh, a lot of your expertise uh, you have to read up yourself and prepare this content carefully uh, i already mentioned you can use ms powerpoint or latex beamer for presentation i am incidentally using the latex beamer uh one of the things that i would uh, urge all of you to uh, do when you do your presentation not only in online classes any presentation is make sure that each slide has limited content uh your slide should not really be you know completely filled with content no that is not the way to have a powerpoint presentation have some bulleted points and you need to really expand and elaborate on what you have written on the slide and it is not uh, at all good if you simply read the contents of the slide it's uh, that is not the idea of a powerpoint presentation so i would uh, personally again this opinion differs here personally i feel that a maximum of 45 minute duration is what a presentation should be online uh, in this 45 minutes uh, actually you can divide this into uh, segments the actual content teaching would probably be only 20 25 minutes the remaining 20 25 minutes would be more of interaction question answer sessions multiple choice questions and things like that where you ask the students to do something of course if it's a video that you're going to give you may be wondering how in a video you can have an interactive mode well there are tools for that also uh, you can make your video interactive by embedding in it questions open ended question multiple choice questions uh, certain audio notes etc which the student will have to forcibly see before he proceeds forward in the video so even that is possible but if you are going to obviously do the class through a zoom meeting or a google meet obviously it is going to be two way and you can uh, unmute that student uh, whoever wants to ask he would have probably posted a question in the chat box and you can make it interactive i urge in fact i i recommend that it should be interactive to the extent possible uh i already told you this you have to avoid reading the content instead you have to explain and elaborate with examples another thing i have realized in the last few months uh, both when i attended webinars as well as when i conducted online classes is we have a tendency to digress in fact in my case it is too much i often go off in a tangent because in my excitement to tell so many things i deviate away from the main topic it should never be done particularly if your class is only going to be for 25 to 50 minutes or 45 minutes then you the time is very important we cannot digress too much digression is important to make the lecture interesting but how much will you digress it should be uh, relevant to the topic that you are talking of but at the same time you you are uh, the the focus of the main topic should never be lost uh, of course this is the key point any class not only online even an offline class one has to engage the students through discussion and i again feel this very strongly and this is what students have given in feedback also uh, incidentally uh, i would like to share our uh, sss student satisfaction survey uh, which was conducted by the team of uh, purnima ma'am and others and i should thank them here they've done a wonderful job 
I will be sharing this SSS of all the uh, students who have taken this SSS. We had embedded it in our website and uh, the results or rather the responses I should say are pretty much interesting. And I would particularly also ask all of you to uh, focus on uh, what students have said in an open-ended question, which was the last question in the SSS on uh, what students feel uh, about the teaching learning process in our college. I will share this soon. So giving home assignment is very important. At the end of each lecture, I feel you must give them some assignment so that they can uh, really, you know, get a grip on what they have learned. And most important is if the assignment, you expect the assignment to be turned into you, you will have to value them and give it back to them with suitable inputs. Now coming back to the tools, there are, there are several tools that, that, that one can use. Uh, to make your online lecture very useful and very interesting and one of the tools that uh, I have found very interesting and very very useful is this uh, free software which is called journal xx it is spelled with uh, x this is like a notepad but it has all the facilities of uh, writing test for of, of scribbling with your handwriting there are pen tools eraser tools etc it is free downloadable and this is the screenshot of that. Uh, I will show you how, how this actually works. Uh, I, I have downloaded this and let me see if I'm able to uh, show you this uh, software. It's a very, very interesting tool. Uh, one minute. Yeah. So here you see this tool that I have with me. Uh, it looks like a journal. It looks like a notebook. And one can actually do a lot of things. One, one can actually write on this. So this, for example, uh, I've, I've selected a tool which says draw a circle. So I'm able to draw this beautiful circle on this. Or here is something else. I will draw a line here. So I can draw a line like this. Or maybe um, I can even draw a rectangle. Okay, so the, there is a text box is there. You can use the text box to write some text. Uh, for example, I will type something. Uh, this is an amazing tool for, sorry, uh, for online teaching. Um, teaching. So what, what I want to tell is that such tools are extremely very, very useful. Uh, X journal is just one of the tools. There is another one that is called open board, which is also very, very, very nice one. So there is an open board software, which I'll show you here. I have open board also installed in this computer. So this is open board. It also looks very similar to uh, the uh, X tool only that you had. And there are these pen tools here and these pen tools are amazing. I, I can actually write in my hand. So I will say this is KMR uh, giving you giving you a presentation. You see, such tools you have to acquire. I mean, uh, it is it is you have to use. That's what I mean. Okay. So this was one of the things I I felt that one one has to do uh, uh, because. Without these tools, our, our lectures can become a little bit of boring kind of thing. So I'll go back to my PPT uh, or Beamer, I should say. And uh, the other tool that I recommend all of you to have is a pen and tablet. See, it is worth investing this. This is around, it will cost, it, this comes from around 3000 rupees to around 10,000 rupees, depending on the brand. You can have Wacom, you can have Eyeball and so on. Uh, today and tomorrow, there are there is a sale in Amazon. Okay, it's Amazon sale day and you can check out on some very good uh, pen and tablet. The advantage of pen and tablet is that you can write. You can really write on the screen uh, using this pen and tablet. And uh, investing in a pen and a tablet is extremely useful, is, is what I feel. Another tool which I have found very useful, freely available and also paid version is the Epic Pen. Now this tool is an amazing tool. What this tool does is, using this tool, you can write on your screen, on any screen. 
Uh, I'll show you this. Uh, it has some uh, features like a pen, eraser, etc. The paid version has all the features, but the free version is very good for annotating. So uh, here is a tube which, which I had downloaded. I'll show you this. Uh, it's a very, very nice tool. Um, let me see where it is. One minute. Uh, I had actually downloaded this. Okay. Uh, desktop. Uh, uh, here. So I'm opening this now and you can see here is a pen. I am taking a pen and I will take a certain font size and I will just start writing on this. I am just writing on the screen. I am not doing anything. This, this thing that you have here, you can download it for Windows, for Linux, etc. And you can simply start using and this is an eraser. In the eraser, I will start erasing whatever I have written. Now you may be wondering uh, whether this also requires something like a pen and a tablet. It is not a pen and a tablet. It is a software where you have the pen tools like the tools that you also have on your PowerPoint, right? And you can put it on anything. In fact, I, I will show you my home screen. You know, this is my home screen. In my home screen also, I, I, I can actually write this. So you can see this. I, I'll choose this pen here again and I'll go back to my home screen and I'll start scribbling on this. I, I can actually start scribbling on the home screen itself uh, in the Epic Pen. So that is, I think, the, the, the biggest advantage uh, of this, this particular tool. Okay, so I want all of you to download this and check it out. It is called Epic Pen. Okay, so with that, uh, let me close this. Close this window and let me continue with my PPT. So I will now go to OBS. So how do we install OBS? What we need to do is, uh, it's very simple. We have to download the latest OBS Studio from the official OBS website and we have to install it. It is available for uh, Windows, it is available for Linux, it is uh, available for Mac operating system also. And the best part is it's very small uh, file size and it is an executable file. So you just have to download it and install it and then you, you are ready. So let me see if I can show, I have already done it but I will try to show you how it can be done. So suppose I go to Google search here and I will just type here OBS. Uh, when I type OBS and hit enter, you see I get the first one here. It says open broadcaster software. So that's how it should be uh, actually told open broadcaster software. There's a symbol for it, logo for it. It says download here. I'll just click on this. And when you click on this, you see it goes to this particular site called OBS Studio and you have here Windows, you have Mac OS and you have Linux. If I click on Windows, in fact, there is uh, uh, there are uh, OBS Studio is available for both 64 bit as well as 32 bit. If I click on this, it will download. Since I've already done it, I will not go to the download. I'll show you that uh, how uh, it has been installed. So once you download this, it will download to your computer and normally it will be in your download sec uh, section. You go there and double click on uh, OBS uh, installer and within few minutes, hardly it takes five minutes, it will install. So once it installs and if you start opening OBS, let us see how it looks and how one has to use OBS. Okay. So uh, there are several reasons why I am suggesting this OBS for you. So let me let me go back to the original slide that I wanted to uh, talk to you about. So this is what I do. So I, I, I will assume that uh, you will go to this OBS Studio website. From there you will download it to your computer depending on whether you have a Windows operating system, Linux system or uh, say Mac OS system for Apple computers. And afterwards I will assume that you have installed it. Now, once you have done all that, um, as I already mentioned, it is available for both in case of Windows for 64-bit and 32-bit. I'm, I'm currently doing this presentation from a Windows system. Okay, So as I already told you, we can download it and install the .exe file and it is ready to use and we are ready to go. So right now, what you are seeing, this whole presentation is actually being done on the OBS Studio itself. So my whole recording of this presentation has been on the OBS Studio only. 
Now, what is this OBS Studio? It is essentially a screen recorder, but it is much more than that. It is so powerful that we can also stream our videos live on YouTube, Facebook, etc. using this particular OBS Studio. So we are going to check that out today. Of course, I will not be streaming it live. Uh, but in the next video that we will be doing, in fact, we plan to do one from our department where we will go into little more details of how to use the OBS Studio. Today, I will only tell you the very, very basic things. So with that, uh, let's, let's go to this OBS Studio and see how it works. So let me go and open this OBS Studio here for you. Um, when you. When you do this first, when you click this, you will see this... Uh, whole window coming to you like this uh, initially when you download and you open you will not see any of this thing uh, you will just see a black screen here you can see me talking here because this is running live now and therefore you are seeing me uh, the main things that you need to know is the following that there are three things here one is called screen scenes the other is called sources to get it started, you need to add these sources. So you can see here, I've added three sources, an audio input capture. I'll tell you how, how it can be added. Audio input capture, self-explanatory. It will help you capture the audio, either through an external mic or through the built-in mic that your system has. Video capture is to see your face or if you want any video to run along with uh, the screen that is getting captured. Display capture is very important. Display capture captures the entire screen. So once you have the display capture source installed, then what happens? Whatever you do on the screen is actually being displayed like you are right now seeing me. You can add or subtract these sources by this plus and minus signs or you may even disable them. For example, if I disable this video capture, you will not see me. You can see that my picture is gone now. Uh, it is there but it is not seen to you. If I enable it again, I am back. Similarly, if I disable the display capture, you are not going to see anything. It is just a black screen. But when I enable it, you will see what I am doing. Okay. So how to add these? Uh, initially, you will have none of the sources. So what you need to do is you need to go to this plus sign here. And when you click the plus sign, you see there are several of these things that are coming. And if you want to have an audio input capture, you can click that. If you want an audio output capture, you can uh, do that. Browser capture, there are several of these things. Okay, video capture device, window capture, etc. Okay, here I would like to tell you something, a difference between display capture and video capture. Video capture, if you, if you install the video capture, then that will capture only the window that has been opened in your screen. If you want to share multiple windows, it will not share multiple windows. At one time, it can capture only one window. But if you have the display capture, it will capture everything that you are doing on the screen. Okay, You saw how I opened the uh, PPT, how I opened one uh, presentation, you saw my first slide and then you saw how I opened the Google uh, you know, um, browser and so on and so forth. But one word of caution here. Since display capture will be capturing everything on your slides, on your screen, you must be careful. If you have personal files or personal data, etc., you must be careful not to open them. If you want to delete any of the thing, for example, let us say uh, there is this video capture. I want to delete the video capture. If I want to delete the video capture, all I do it, I highlight it and press the minus sign. So when I press the minus sign, you see it asks you, uh, are you sure you wish to remove the video capture? If I say yes, that's it. Now you are not able to see me uh, because I have the display capture on. You are able to see everything that I do on the screen, but my face is not there. So if I again want to add a video capture, what I can do, I go to the plus sign here and here you, I browse, I mean, I scroll down and I see here there is a video capture device. So when I click on this, it asks me create new video capture device. Now by default, it will take the webcam of your um, uh, say computer. In case you have an external camera attached, then it will show you that also. I will come to that. In the settings, you can select a webcam or you can select a separate external camera. And then if you say OK, it will ask you now, uh, it is asking here whether I should, what is the device which should capture your video. I right now have only the webcam of my laptop. So if I click on this small down arrow, you see there is only integrated webcam available. I don't have an external uh, camera. If I had, it will display that also. 
ದೆನ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿಫಾಲ್ಟ್ ಸೆಟ್ಟಿಂಗೆ ಬಿಡ್ಬೋದು ನೀವು ಬಿಟ್ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನೀವು ಓಕೆ ಅಂತ ಕ್ಲಿಕ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ದ ಮೂಮೆಂಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಲಿಕ್ ಓಕೆ ಯು ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಹೋಲ್ ಸ್ಲೈಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ನಾವು ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಓವರ್ ಲೇಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಕ್ಯಾಪ್ಚರ್ ಸೊ ಏನೇನು ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಇದನ್ನು ರೀಸೈಜ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೂವ್ ಇಟ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪುಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಕನ್ವೀನಿಯೆಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಟು ಸಿ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಐ ಇನ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಐ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲರ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಫೈನ್ ನಾವು ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮಿನಿಮೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಪುಟ್ ದಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯಾ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಐ ಐ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ನೌ like that i have added a video capture i have added an audio capture input because i have added audio capture you can see here in this audio mixer my audio is is running that's why you are seeing this and i can go to audio settings okay i leave it to you to explore if i if i click on this settings there are several properties for example i can click on settings and go to properties and i can choose audio devices i can have external mic i can uh, now of course it is from internal mic of the computer i can have external mic uh, you can do several of these things okay uh, then most importantly how do you start and how do you stop before you do that there are a couple of other things uh, so i will come back to the scene later any number of sources you can add there are several sources that you can add and but the three main things that you should have to get it started is video capture audio capture and display capture window capture is an option then let's come here this is the control in the control you see here there is something called start streaming this is if you want to go live on video or on youtube or facebook etc uh, and now right now it is recording and therefore uh, i've already i started my recording by clicking what is called uh, start recording or there are also hot keys shortcut keys that you can have for that and then there is something called studio mode i will not go into it today and then there is stop recording once you have done with your recording you can stop it then before you do that before you really start your recording there is some settings that you should know some basic settings there are there are many many settings that one can do in this but it is best left unset one has to explore it and find out yourself but what are the basic settings if you click on the settings for example you see here you have a general setting in the general setting it will ask you the language uh, i have selected english by default theme i have selected a dark theme and there are several other themes also you can select uh, etc but dark is good for me then one of the things i would like to do in the general setting uh, to begin with is i have clicked uh, this selected this automatically record when streaming so if i go on live streaming i not only want it to stream i also want it to record so i put, i have selected this here snap sensitivity a source alignment it is preferable to leave the default itself and before i click okay i can i can click okay here that means that is all i am going to do in the setting but before that what i'll do go to the streaming part the streaming part okay before i go to streaming i think i will show you the output and input thing output tells you what is the kind of video you are going to get uh, the bit rate it it can be selected there are several bit rates here you can select it 2500 is what i have done you can make it more or you can make it less encoder it is preferable to keep it in software this is what i have realized there is software and hardware keep it in software audio bit rate also depending on the microphone that you have uh, the output can have different bit rates 160 is pretty good in the recording this is a path here it's a path that is shown here where your videos will be stored so in my system here it is in the c drive users kmr videos so in the folder called videos i will find all these uh, recordings then when i come to the audio input here you can see here uh, you can this is all already i have set and therefore you are not seeing some of the things i have set the sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz and so on leave it to the default i suggest that when you initially start just don't do any changes let let it be in the default itself and then uh, the video display also uh, this is my video display now i have put the output at um, um, some 852 by 140 because it is a sm smaller resolution higher resolutions are also available 
uh, what is the output because my input resolution is 1920 into 1080 my output resolution has been scaled down because if people want to see these videos on mobile it is better they have a smaller uh, resolution and then interestingly there are so many hotkeys i have selected three hotkeys for me uh, my start recording is the tilde the tilde is on the left uh, top corner of your uh, laptop keyboard just below the escape key so if i press that uh, this software will start my recording and i have used the end key or f12 uh, to stop my recording in between if i have to pause and uh, repause i have used the escape key so i have selected this it is up to you to select any hotkeys you want you can select hotkeys for all of this and then you can apply it and then click okay and then i'll now come to stream now if you want to stream live hoping that assuming that you have an uh, youtube uh, account you have to first go to the youtube uh, site and there there is something called go live so uh, about streaming i will do another video along with dr manu to show you how we can use this obs uh, today i will just tell you that once you go to your youtube site there when you go to go live and click on go live there are some details that you have to provide whether your live streaming must be done at a later date that means you can set the date and time of the streaming or you can do it currently just before you start your video or right now i can actually stream it what is most important is you have to select a server here generally the moment you click this youtube service automatically it will select the nearest server for you uh, youtube has by default its own server you have to give this stream key so this in the next video we will show you once you go to go live in your youtube channel it will and after you filled up all the details it will generate a stream key you have to copy that stream key and you have to paste it here once you get it once you paste the stream key here and then you click apply now i have already done it for my youtube channel uh, hoping that i i wanted to do this live in a uh, today evening Uh, by seven o'clock or something, but then I decided let's not go to uh, streaming live today. We will have a complete video of fifteen twenty minutes explaining how this is done, and then we will stream it. So this stream key is available. The moment you go live, uh, you will get the stream key there in your YouTube site, and that you have to copy and paste here. Once that's all done, you you can click OK, and your settings are ready. And in this, if you say start streaming, it will start streaming. so you can see that this obs studio has so many features it it really can't be explained in 10 or 15 minutes my enthusiasm got the better of me and i wanted to share this with you so that is why i did this video i want all of you to download this obs video uh, obs software and check this out because we are also supposed to do these online classes you know, probably by the month end or next week uh, by next month and so on so it is better that along with the moodle system that we learn if our online videos are all done on this then we can post these videos in the moodle itself and if uh, when students are given access to the uh, moodle uh, lms system all our videos which are done on obs can be posted on moodle and video uh, students can see it any time any number of times again and again and again so that is what i wanted to share with you i will stop this recording now i uh, i hope that many of you have watched this uh thank you very much and it was a pleasure talking to you about the small things that i have learned uh to be very honest with you uh, i feel sad that i am going to retire next year because i feel that these online tools can be added to our uh, say um, what shall i say our armory so to speak along with the classroom teaching which we have been doing for ages now Uh, these tools can be uh, integrated into our classroom teaching of course there is nothing to uh, replace a teacher a blackboard and a uh, white chalk maybe but but then with technology we need to move on and uh, i realize that these tools can be used very effectively to supplement and complement what we teach in the class with that thank you very much for watching